Hey folks, welcome to Make Anything. It's Devin here, and today we're doing another printer review. I almost said 3D printer, but it's not a 3D printer. Today we're looking at a kind of uh, new device. This is called the world's first quick drying smart handy printer by Cellpick. It's a handheld printer that you can roll over different surfaces and print onto them with the special quick drying ink. So, uh, it says here on the bottom of the box that there are endless possibilities. On the side here it says it works on any surface. And uh, it's got several different color cartridges you can use. It's apparently a very quick drying ink. At around $200, I'm hoping this is more than just a toy. We're gonna test it out today and see if we can print on all types of different surfaces and see how useful it really is. So uh, I don't really know what to expect. Let's open it up. All right, let's open this up and see what we've got. Of course, there is the cell pick itself. Here it is. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty reasonable size. We've got the printing button here. And then on the bottom, we've got these four wheels. That one with the arrow is the tracking wheel. We've got the opening for the ink cartridge. And then we've got an indicator light. On the back here, we've got the power on off button. We have the input, input, two words apparently. That rolls nice and smooth. We've got another part here, which is just a nice magnetic base. So that makes it nice and easy to set it down without damaging the actual ink cartridge. Here we've got that ink cartridge that came with the package. It comes with one black cartridge, although Cellpick sent me two extras, a red and a blue, just so that I could play around with the colors. Of course, we've also got a charging cable. We've got some manuals and that's about it. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and put in our ink cartridge. So this just pops right open like so. The cartridge itself looks just like uh, anything you'd get with your standard inkjet printer. It's got this protective cover and then we can just go ahead and place it straight in like so. Push that in, snap it into place. Perfect. So let's turn it on and see what happens if we try to print with it. You are going to need to connect this to a smartphone, Android, or Apple if you want to customize your message, which you definitely do. But let's see if it comes with anything by default. I'll click that print button and go ahead and scroll. Wow, there we go. Just like that, we've got a printed message and it looks like it came out really nice and straight, even though I wasn't exactly going at a consistent speed. That's pretty promising, so let's go ahead and install the Cellpick app and start connecting it with our machine here. I did have to create an account, so I made myself a username, put in my email address, and then you have to go ahead and get a code sent to your email so that you can activate it. I'm not sure why that's necessary for this device, but there you have it. Here we are inside the app. It looks very minimal and simple, which could be a good or bad thing, but first thing we have to do is connect it, and you do that using Wi-Fi. The printer will generate its own Wi-Fi hotspot, and you can go ahead and connect to that. Of course, it won't actually give you internet, but it will let you control the device from your phone. Here I am playing around with the features. I already got a few pieces of text in there, and basically you can create individual items. So here we'll just have a little bit of cool text, and you can drag individual parts around and arrange them within this canvas. With the text, there's a few basic options. We can make the text italic, bold, underlined, or strike through. And we have four fonts to choose from. So not exactly the largest selection, but I do like thin condensed. So let's go with that. Italicized and bold. Very cool. Down here, we can scroll through the entire canvas. So as you can see, we've got this pretty good length that we can fill up with text or images or whatever but the height of the cell pick is limited to half an inch. You have to go to this little secret menu and scale things up like that. It takes some learning, but eventually you figure out where everything is and then it's not a big deal. So we can flip text, we can invert it, we can rotate it, and we can also adjust the spacing between letters, somewhat. 
For some reason though, the text here is spaced very awkwardly. No matter what I do, when I'm in text edit mode, it looks fine, but when I accept it, it's got this really strange kerning. So if you're a graphic designer, that's probably gonna bother you. Let's try out the last font, this super cheesy square font. Looks like something from the matrix, but hey, there we go. Make anything, cool. Let's go ahead and try to print something. Oh, whoops. I did that upside down. And I also apparently need to send the file to the cell pick. So to do that, you actually use this little button in the bottom right corner, and then you wait a few seconds and your message will get sent to the printer. There we go, we get the notification saying it was successful, hit the print button, and then scroll. Cool, there we have it. The letters are still spaced kind of weirdly as they are in the app, but the quality of the print itself is just about as good as your standard inkjet printer. So that's text, and there's also a few other things you can throw in. We've got QR codes, which is actually pretty cool. You can program it with any type of text or even a website. So there's our make anything website QR code. Let me just drag everything else out of the way and put that QR code right to the very left of the canvas to make sure it starts printing as soon as I start scrolling. There we go. Let's hit print and try it out. All right, well, it's definitely stretched out a bit. It looks more like a rectangle than a square. But when I use my QR code reader, sure enough, it has no problem understanding the code and directing to my website. So that's a nice way to print links and other kinds of information. And there's actually a button right there to clear everything, which is nice to know. Along with QR codes, we can also program custom barcodes. Just type in any characters that you want programmed within the barcode and it's automatically generated. Of course, you'll need a barcode reader to do anything useful with that. But it works quite well. Finally, I'll try this little image icon. And as I scroll through, there's two pages of various cute little emojis, but as much as I played around with the app and read through the manual, I still could not figure out how to upload custom images. Hmm, so after reading through the manual, both the paper manual and the one provided through the app, it seems like they currently don't support custom images. So I actually plugged my phone into the computer and the app did create a little Celpic pictures folder on my phone, but when I dragged images onto there, all sorts of different file types, it didn't show up in the app. So it doesn't seem like that uh, capability is currently supported. I was really hoping that I could use custom images to, for example, get the Make Anything logo in the correct font and have my little logo, but it seems like that's not currently supported on this machine, although it, it's also something that a firmware update should be able to add. So hopefully Celpic goes ahead and updates their app and gives the custom image capability. It looks like it's something they might be working on. But for now, we've got barcodes, QR codes, uh, we've got four fonts and we can write whatever we want. And there's a few random cute emojis that you can use. Those are the only pictures that are actually provided. That's the first blow to this app. Custom images would be really cool, but overall it prints really well on paper. So the next thing we wanna figure out is how well it prints on all sorts of other materials. So I've got all kinds of stuff here. Let's try it out. All right, so paper worked. How about we try printing on wood? That seems like the next easiest thing. So I'll just quickly type up something uh, super creative. Yeah, that'll do. And uh, let's see if we can throw some emojis on there. Nope, no emojis. We can use these little old school emojis, but nah. I'll scale it up a bit and maybe we'll invert it as well. All right, we'll send it to the printer and it looks like the back wheels won't actually be rolling on the wood because it's not large enough, but let's see if we can still get a clean print. This is wood. There we go. So this actually came out looking really good as well. It's almost as clean as the paper, maybe a little bit fuzzy, but definitely legible. Although like the QR code, it does look a little bit stretched out. So I wonder if that has to do with the speed. Let's try a faster pass. Okay, so I went a lot quicker that time and it looks exactly the same in terms of how stretched out it is. So I think that has more to do with the calibration of the actual wheel here. 
All right, let's try some trickier materials. I've got this speaker here that's made of aluminum and plastic. So that'll be a nice test for those two materials. Could be good if you're planning on printing onto your laptop or a laptop case. So let's start out with the plastic. I'll just whip up another quick little message. How about I claim my property? And let's actually make this text as small as it'll let us do it and see if that's still legible. And why don't we throw in one of these emojis as well? Something I can relate with. Oh yeah, that looks like existential dread. Let's go ahead and arrange that and send it to the printer. There we go. And there's a little bit of smudge, but it is still legible at this really tiny size. So that's pretty impressive. And sure enough, it is quick drying. I already can't smudge it, so that's pretty cool. Now let's try the aluminum. How about I label the power button? Well, I can definitely still work on my spacing. It is tough to get things aligned exactly how you want, but once again on the aluminum, it is looking really nice and clean and it dries really quickly as well. All right, next up is glass. This is one that I'm really curious about because printing on glass seems really tricky and I'm skeptical that it won't smudge. I'm gonna be filling this jar with very important things, so I will label it as such. Weird spacing again, but let's go ahead and try it out. It's kind of tricky with this small round jar because we do need to maintain contact with that tracking wheel. Maybe it's easier if I rotate the jar instead of the printer. Let's try that out. Whoa, that was pretty cool. But uh, okay, I printed it backwards. I guess I went in the wrong direction and that's pretty sloppy. Let's try it again. All right, that's a little bit better, but there still is a little bit of skipping just because, like I said, it's a very tough object to keep contact against. The other thing I noticed is if you start drawing and then lose contact for too long, you can't really continue. It'll just stop printing. So yeah, something like this is definitely gonna take a little bit of practice. Next up, let's try printing on some 3D prints. After all, this is mainly a 3D printing channel, so let's see if we can get some graphics onto my poly panels here. And I'm actually gonna unfold my poly panels so it's a little easier to run across them. All right, here we go. Swoop, whoops. All right, messed up the alignment again. Let's try one more time. All right, I'm really bad at that. But alignment aside, the print quality itself actually came out really nice. If you've ever tried drawing on a 3D print with a Sharpie or something, you know that it tends to bleed a lot at the layers, but here it came out really clean and it barely bleeds. So I'm still impressed. How about a trickier print like my Springo here? Not too bad, not too bad at all. It's definitely not as dark as I was hoping. And I think I got a little bit of skipping again just because I didn't maintain that contact, but it did indeed print onto the Springo, so that's pretty cool. Okay, how about ceramic? That's something that a lot of you might be wanting to print onto. This cup will go in the bathroom to hold toothbrushes, so I'll go ahead and give it a nice informative message. Hey, that actually came out really nice. It's a lot easier when you have a decently large, smooth, flat surface like this. Pretty good. Now for the important stuff, let's see if we can label my underwear. You never know when you might leave your underwear behind, so let's go ahead and label this so that uh, they can be safely returned. I'll kind of lay this out as straight as I can and go for it. Oh, whoops. I lost the wheel there for a few inches. And uh, all right, that's that. <laughs> I mean, it technically has my name on it. So by now you can see there's a little bit of smudging on the bottom of the cell pick here. It's not really causing any problems yet, but I'll go ahead and wipe it down with these soggy cotton balls that cell pick mailed to me. I'm not exactly sure what this stuff is soaked in. It smells more like tequila than isopropyl alcohol, but I'm guessing it's some type of alcohol and it does clean the ink really easily. All right, cool. So, so far we've established that this thing can indeed print 
on all sorts of different surfaces, just about anything you'd want to, and uh, it works decently well. It gives an accurate print as long as you're able to move very nice and straight across the surface, you can get a good print. If you're printing on something wrinkly or very strangely shaped, it may be hard to maintain contact and actually get a good print. But I was especially surprised with how well it printed on my underwear. So we're gonna try to do something somewhat creative and we're gonna print a custom t-shirt right now. Now, unfortunately, uh, I'm not able to use custom images like I was hoping to. So I have to do some kind of text-based design. And my, uh, my first idea was to actually go into my computer, take a 3D model of the Make Anything logo, convert it to G-code for a slicing for a 3D printer, but then actually just print the G-code itself onto the shirt. So theoretically, someone would be able to look at my shirt, type in all the characters on here, and then use that to 3D print the Make Anything logo. We will find out how much text I can actually upload at one time. I think you can only do one line at a time, so we'll have to figure out exactly how to do that. I'm sure this shirt will be uh, interesting. And let's actually switch out the ink just for fun. I'm going to go ahead and swap this out with the red ink and see how that works. Here's all that G-code that I got from my slicer. I just went ahead and sent that to my phone from my computer and I pasted it into my note-taking app here just so that I could select a few lines at a time and copy them and paste them into the CellPick app. I'm going to start off by selecting three lines and see what happens when I try to paste them all in together. Well, it looks like we're pretty limited to the length of our text and it only printed on one line. So I think we're going to have to paste in one line at a time. Definitely not ideal, but let's see if we can make this work. Now I'll start by testing this out on some cardboard just to make sure that the text is legible and I got the sizes that I want and everything. I don't want to ruin my only shirt. So there we go. Definitely legible at this tiny font, but I think we're going to go a little bit larger for the t-shirt. What if we just do the default size? That's better. I'm pretty happy with that size. So I'm going to go ahead and start prepping my shirt. I learned my lesson from those undies. So this time I'm going to go ahead and put some backing inside of the shirt so that it can be held straight and flat. I'm using this 11 by 17 inch cutting board, but any stiff piece of material like cardboard should do the job. There we go. I'll just get it nice and square and lined up. Eh, the fabric still moves around a bit, so let's go ahead and add some binder clips. All right, there we go. Our setup is ready. So I guess there's nothing to do now, but try this first line. Looks like we kind of lost the semicolon at the beginning, but overall it printed out really nicely. Let's go ahead and get on to the next line. Let's see if we can align this. I'm pretty sure it starts printing from the center of the ink cartridge. Okay, definitely not perfectly aligned, but I guess that's kind of the point. I want a little bit of a handmade feel to this t-shirt. Otherwise, I could just get it printed some other way. I did figure out that I can print three lines at a time. I've got enough height for that. So I'll pretty much do that for the rest of the shirt, just printing three lines at a time. That creates this interesting pattern and it looks cool. Now I've just got to do that over and over and over again for hundreds of lines of code. It's definitely no quick feat, but before the end of the day, I was able to get through every last line of G-code. All right, there it is, my very own super custom t-shirt. Uh, it ended up taking many, many hours late into the night and both sides, but I was able to fit the whole G-code on, so uh, technically someone could uncode this and get the Make Anything logo. I think it's a pretty fun idea for a shirt, and the cell pick did an amazing job with it. I'm really surprised by how well this works with fabric. It's super clean and detailed, and sure, I didn't keep it completely straight sometimes. And maybe you could use some kind of a guide if you wanted really perfectly straight lines, but in this case, 
I wanted it to look kind of artsy and hand done. And I'm super happy with how it turned out. I gotta say, the Celpic delivers when it says that it can print on any surface. I was really doubtful that it would actually be able to print on things like glass. But sure enough, it works and it dries really quickly and doesn't smudge. It's pretty awesome like that. Looking at the website, it seems like they show off a slightly different version of the app and they also do say that you can use custom logos and images. That's basically the one thing that I was wanting that I didn't get out of this today. So if that is in fact possible, I'll uh, put a note in the description or in the comments. Honestly, I did think there was a decent chance that this would be quite a gimmick, but I don't think I would call it that. You definitely do want to know what you're going to do with it before you buy on this. It's not something that you kind of randomly want to get. But if you already have a use in mind for the Celpic, it does what it promises and it does it really well. So there's that. I could see this being a really cool tool for a small business owner, for example. If you want to print your logo or barcodes onto special packaging or directly onto products, this can do some very interesting stuff. And I think it's great for that. But it's definitely a tool and not a toy. Considering that $200 price range plus $80 per ink cartridge, you know, the price adds up. Now I was able to do this whole shirt and the ink is still going strong. I haven't run out of any of the cartridges. They look very large, although you can't see inside. So who knows? Inkjet ink, it's a crazy and corrupt world. But the printing works really well. I only had to wipe the ink head once to get this staying clean. Um, overall, yeah, like I said, it delivers on what it promises. So that's all I can really say about the Celpic S1. Um, I have a feeling that you guys have some ideas of ways that you could use this that I didn't think of. So I would love it if you left some suggestions in the comments. Maybe it'll show up in a future video. Yeah, I really had fun with this thing and I'm glad to have it around because I think it will be handy. I mean, it's just like a super powered label machine and you guys know how fun it is to just label everything. So maybe I'll do that. <laughs> So that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you had fun watching it. Give it a like if you did. And uh, well, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired. I hope this is non-toxic.